Hi everyone, welcome back to AFTV. Now I've got a really, really special show for you today. We've got a very special guest waiting in the wings. But before I introduce him, before we go into all that, this Daniel X stuff, this Spotify takeover, everything going on with the Cronkies and the movement, we saw the Man United protest, it's not going away. You know, and it shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't let up on the Cronkies and the situation that's going on at the club. The Super League was a disaster, but it was the straw that broke the camel's back. And it's a it's a bigger problem than just what happened with the Super League. We saw at the Arsenal protest and we've seen that the fans, they're still making their voice heard. And that's great. But, you know, for there to be a seller, there's got to be a buyer as well. And obviously, Daniel X really put his hat in the ring recently. We saw it started with a tweet, but then it's come out in all the reports. Everyone's stating that with the help of Thierry Henry, Patrick Vieira and Dennis Burkamp, you know, Daniel Ek is looking to to buy Arsenal Football Club. He, he recently said in an interview that he's got the funds to do it. They're working on it. It's not going to be an easy process, but, you know, it is... Um it's happening. Well, I mean, it, it's happening in terms of they're they're trying. They're trying to make it happen. And Thierry Henry actually spoke about this on Monday Night Football, which I think would have surprised many people quite how upfront he was about it. Um, which I love, by the way. And I think the fan base will love the fact that we've got an, an, an Arsenal legend who's you know who's reportedly a part of this, confirming that he is. Just a couple quotes that came out of that. He says, "It is true. Daniel is an Arsenal fan. He didn't just say it for any publicity." Good. That's what we want to know. We want to know that there's someone who genuinely loves the club, who's looking to take us forward, who wants to, you know, from the very top, try and, you know, trickle down and make everything better, improve the club, improve, you know, our values, everything, everything that Henri said we lost. He said it himself that first and foremost, we want to involve the fans and we've actually met with the Arsenal supporters trust. I didn't know that. That's brilliant. I love that. And then another thing that I thought, you know, was really encouraging. He said, if you had fans on the board, what happened in the Super League would never have happened agree with all that so what do we know about daniel Ek? well i've got limited knowledge but i've got an expert in him who's actually written a book called the spotify play how ceo and founder daniel Ek beat apple google and amazon in the race for audio dominance sven carlson is here with me hi sven how are you doing hi there i'm well thanks how are you yeah very good thank you so much for joining um i mean you've written a book on this guy you're the expert um arsenal fans will be Really keen to hear from you and hear kind of your thoughts on him as a businessman, but also as an Arsenal fan, as a potential owner. There's quite a bit to unpack here. Um, but just very quickly, tell us a bit about yourself and, and the book and how you kind of got involved in all this. Sure. So uh, I'm Swedish. I'm from Stockholm um, and uh, I've been a journalist for about seven or eight years. And I began to cover, I began to work as a business reporter around five, six years ago. Um, and I started to focus more and more on tech companies and obviously uh, Spotify is sort of the, the holy grail in terms of that uh, from Sweden. So, so I began to cover them around 2015, 16, that sort of time. Uh, and that was in the, the lead up to their IPO, essentially, which uh, happened in, in 2018. Um, and so I began to cover them. I found a pretty um, sort of successful but also secretive company, which obviously entices you as a as a news reporter, right? If there are things that you can't sort of you hear, but you can't necessarily confirm, you really try and you know get details on that and, and report it out for your readers. So so that's what I spent a lot of time doing at a financial paper here in Stockholm. And then um, by the time the IPO uh, came around, we sort of felt that it was time. Me, myself, and and my co-writer uh, Jonas uh, Leonhivid uh, felt that it was sort of time to to report the story and to really tell it um, because we found that there was so much drama so much you know about the spotify story that wasn't actually known uh to the public because of how sort of secretive and how how um how they sort of prefer to tell their own story without necessarily uh spilling it all to the public so so we kind of wanted to do that and and to get a grip of both the company but also uh daniel ek as, as founder and his, his co-founder martin Lawrenson too so the book came out 2019 in sweden and then this year we we put out a revised and updated uh english version which is uh the one you just mentioned wow i mean it sounds super interesting um the one thing you know not not to be uh sort of critical of, of daniel for a minute one but the one thing arsenal fans don't want is secrecy is you know um this idea that maybe we don't know what's going on around the club um but you know he, he sounds he's come forward he sounds like a very upfront person um he definitely has been with this move and obviously with Henri and what he said and yeah, he's really put his hat in the ring now what's kind of before we go into kind of the arsenal stuff what kind of person is Danielek? you know 
who who is he? What what kind of guy are we speak about? It, it sounds great from what we're seeing and the kind of the the, the noises we're hearing around the the potential takeover. Um, but from your perspective. Sure. So, I mean, it's it's true that he's an Arsenal fan. Uh, so am I, actually. Um, oh, but he, uh, Yeah, and he, um, what turned him into to Arsenal was, was Anders Limpar in the early 90s, apparently, which he's obviously tweeted about uh, about a year ago. Um, but yeah, he, he has been an Arsenal fan. He's also a fan of AIK here in Stockholm, a northern Stockholm team. And he, he follows them. I, I don't know for sure that he's had a season ticket or anything like that, but I know that he, he spent time in London uh, when he was living there around 10 years ago. Um, and, and he is known to, to many of his friends and to the sort of employees who used to play FIFA with him around the office as, as a sort of devoted Arsenal fan. Um, Daniel grew up in, in sort of modest uh, uh, surroundings, he grew up in, in southern Stockholm in a sort of uh, lower middle class suburb, I'd say, in, in the 1980s uh, with a single mother. Uh, his, his father sort of left um left her uh before daniel was even born uh, to, to um actually live with another woman and, and start a family with her so daniel actually has a half sibling who was born uh, sort of a few months apart from him um so, so there was kind of you know rejection there from from early on i think he's he's always been out to prove himself and he's always been out to to do something uh great you know he, he used to tell his his uh, uh, peers around when he was 10 or 11 that, you know, I want to be the next Bill Gates, because of course Bill Gates was, was running uh, Microsoft in the, in the early or mid 1990s. And, and he's always had those sort of high ambitions and he's applied to get a job at Google as a teenager and was rejected and, and became, I think, even more determined to do something um, that was European, that was Swedish, uh, that, wasn't, that, was, that could compete with the, the great U.S. tech companies, uh, but that could do it sort of from Europe and, and in a European way. And I think, I mean, that's something he's he's always been talking about. And I think he's he's actually, you know, been proven kind of right in that. I mean, he's recently pledged to invest a billion euros into into sort of high tech uh, European uh, startup companies. Uh, and that's, you know, that's that's a sizable amount of his wealth. And it might even put into question how much he can put aside to, to buy Arsenal if that's what he's going to do. Um, but, mm. I, but I think he's, he's sort of, he's an ambitious person. He's a storyteller, um, a, a particularly sort of one-on-one. -on -one. He can really enthuse people and get them going. Um, his superpower as a, as a businessman is sort of the, the sort of entrepreneurial thing of being able to convince someone that, that you know, this great goal is something that can be reached, you know, even if it's unrealistic. And he's always had those sort of high, uh, ambitions. He's he's not always been a super comfortable public speaker. He doesn't really enjoy doing interviews that much. Although he's gotten much better um, at sort of stage performances as time has has gone on. But I think his his he's not necessarily a programmer. He's he's always sort of dabbled with that. But he's never been the sort of best programmer around. He's always known people who are uh, far more advanced in that field. So I think his his sort of skill is as a sort of project manager, entrepreneur, bringing people on board and getting them to work for him. I think that's what, and, and having his, his sort of sights set on a, on a grand uh, goal and not compromising uh, too much in order to reach it. So I think that's, those are his sort of strong characteristics. Um, and and now, I mean, I think he's, he's, while he's sort of kept his cards sort of close to his chest during the Spotify years, I think that's starting to let up. Um, I think the controversies with artists and labels, although they're still around, there's a lot of artists and labels who are, or especially artists and songwriters who are, who are upset with Spotify for the sort of compensation rates. I think he, he's sort of, he's able to be more open and more upfront about those things today. It doesn't always land super well. Um, but I think the way in which he's communicated this uh, intended bid, I mean, uh, yeah, as you say, I think he's been pretty open about it. He's, he's gone on air and said, you know, I think I have the funds and I want to present it to the owners. I think, I think we know, I mean, there's stuff going on behind the scenes, of course, but I think he's, you know, we know basically as much as, as there is to know, although there must be sort of detailed stuff that he's into. But I think he has been quite transparent about this. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I mean, a lot to unpack there, a lot of great stuff, music to my ears, a lot of that. Um, we'll break it down. I, I kind of want to touch on that first bit about Spotify. Um, you know, he's kind of, as you said, he's been sort of more open recently. Um, I, I, I agree with you. I don't think he could have been more upfront, really, about this takeover. He's not, you can't come out and say, I'm going to bid this and I'm going to bid it on Saturday. And, you know, he can't do that. That's not, a, it's not good business. Um, but B, it's, there's a degree of confidentiality between him, him and the Cronkies, and you know there, there's there's a process that they need to go through. But I think he's been very upfront about 
what he wants to do and who he's working with to do it. And he's also said that it might take time. He doesn't expect this to happen overnight. And that's been great for Arsenal fans because what we've wanted to see is someone who, when we say communicate with the fans, we don't mean that they need to come out and do a press conference every week. We mean that they just need to have a degree of, we need to be in the know to a, to, to a degree. We need to know what's going on with our football club. And I think he's made a good start in, you know, in the way he's kind of presented this bid. And the report suggests that this isn't something that's happened overnight either. He's not just decided, I want to buy Arsenal. He's actually been around a while and he's actually been thinking about this for a while. I don't know if you know too much about that. But re regarding Spotify, um, what is his reputation in that industry, in the music industry? I'll be honest, I know very little about it. Um, you, you know, I've heard about sort of the, the business model and how it's kind of seen at times by artists. But what's his kind of reputation in that particular field? I mean, uh, I think at this point uh, in the sort of music industry, so among sort of business people, I guess, like among the labels, uh, maybe the songwriters associations too. I mean, he's he's got a he's he's got a lot of power, that's for sure, um, and he he is very well respected. I think at this point, as an innovator and as someone who's helped to sort of revive the music industry in terms of their revenues, because that's streaming has done that, and Spotify has been the pine, the global pioneer in music yeah. streaming right so that f from that perspective i think he's he is respected and i think he's he's revered um that said there's a lot of sort of uh disappointment and anger directed towards spotify as well um f primarily from artists and songwriters who feel that they aren't uh, compensated fairly basically so that's been a, a a running theme you know throughout the company's history it started in there was sort of the the major sort of first public boycott was maybe Bob Dylan in, in 2009 um, when he sort of uh, uh, came off of Spotify um, and that really sort of rattled the company I think I think it made them aware of just how controversial uh, their what, what they thought was a was a great sort of solution for, for music listeners uh, was then and, and continues to be and obviously they're you know Radiohead and Tom York have been quite critical. Um, Taylor Swift obviously boycotted Spotify for a bit, but though she has returned. Um, what, what we can say is that most of the artists who have boycotted have, have returned to Spotify for one reason or another. That, you know, it might be that they've reached such a scale now that, that there actually is real money for them to make. But of course, I mean, Spotify does benefit the, the artists who get the most streams. It, it sort of pays you on volume, right? So it doesn't necessarily let um sort of independent or more niche uh, artists uh flourish in the same way uh that's at least what the critics would say and they've also recently started to to sort of experiment because we got to remember that spotify isn't uh isn't i mean it's just about profitable now so their, their last quarter was was you know there's a slim profit there it's usually it hovers around zero right so it's either a bit of right, a, okay. a slim loss or a slim profit each quarter and that's basically a testament to the fact that this, this business is, is pretty hard to run because so much of the revenue goes straight out the door uh, to the industry. So it goes to the labels and the, and the songwriters associations, et cetera. Now, what actually end up, ends up in an artist's pocket is, is another question. That's the next step, right? That's, that's, that depends on what deals they've struck with their uh, representatives, their labels, etc. But but basically, right. Spotify isn't. I mean, it's it's a. I'd say it's probably a healthy business, but it's investing a lot into expansion and into to sort of increasing its footprint around the globe. And you know, the financials aren't. There aren't profits there, and there there may be, of course. And and a lot of investors are are betting that there will be. And it's not. You know, running a profit is not necessarily everybody's top priority when you're a tech company in the sort of early days, as as Daniel Ek would put it, of of the company's history. Um, but but I mean, so that's uh, that, that's one thing we do have to remember. And and a lot of that money goes to to artists and songwriters. So he's, you know, he's he's been a controversial figure. He can sometimes come out with stuff that that sort of doesn't land very well. He said earlier this year, I think that. You know, maybe maybe artists should should get used to releasing more than an album every couple of years, and that you know, from the artist and songwriter community, that wasn't that was received as as some businessman like you know forcing them to make sort of fast food music, uh, and and that's it doesn't always go down super well. So I think in the business community is one thing, and among artists and songwriters, a slightly different one. But I, but I do think that he approaches this Arsenal potential bid for Arsenal as, but of course, as a businessman, because that's how he gets his foot in the door. But 
I think his his motivation for it is is primarily um, emotional. I think. Yeah, Look, that's great to hear, and actually very insightful because um, you know to hear that they're turning over slim profits or slim losses kind of makes the point that you know there's not, and I don't really know how this works necessarily, but they're not sitting on millions and millions and millions that's going to no one, you know, so that, that, that's actually, that's interesting to know. And I think maybe a, a relief for some to know as well, because as you said, in a lot of ways, Spotify has done, you know, good for the, for the music industry as well. But look in the nicest way, I use Spotify. I love it. I, I'm not too bothered about the music industry right now. I'm bothered about Arsenal football club and the sports industry and our industry. Um, I think what's really interesting for Arsenal fans is, uh, there are a lot of people around me getting very excited about Daniel Ek and the potential takeover, and rightly so, rightly so. I am wary because while the Cronkies are not the answer, and I've got to that stage, I'm at the point where I've decided the Cronkies are definitely not going to be the owners that will take us to prolonged, sustained success. We might have a Jurgen Klopp one, one day who finds a way to, you know, put together a great team and win titles. Um, but it, it's not going to be in large part down to the Cronkies if that were to ever happen. So I'm ready to move on, but we've got to make sure that the, the owner's the right guy, that the, the person who comes in is the right person. And I think there's almost two types of successful owners. There's the guys with loads of money who will throw money at the problem. And I think the reality is whether people like it or not, that money does pretty much guarantee success in football in one way or another. You look at Man City, Chelsea, PSG, it's not always been money well spent, but overall, it's pretty much always led to success. Man United, without winning titles, have still done pretty well with big spending behind them. So there's kind of that owner. And then there's the owner who has a genuine, I'm not saying the other owners don't care about the club, but they do it via being very shrewd, smart business people, get the right business in place, spend money in the right places. Um, I can think the Leicester owners, they don't throw millions and millions and millions at the club. Um, but they spend very wisely. They've got the right infrastructure around them and they do wonders for the community as well. Again, the other owners do for the community as well. But I guess my point is, what kind of owner could Daniel Ek be? Is this the kind of guy who's going to come in and, you know, we're going to see £150 million spent on players in the first summer? Or is it a case of, you know, readdressing the problems at the club from top to bottom. Maybe something that while Arsenal fans don't want to hear the word process because we've heard it for so long under Arteta, maybe it is going to be a bit of a process seeing the restructure of the club under Ek. Yeah, I mean, obviously that remains to be seen. I think uh, Daniel is is somebody who's, he, he's got a lot of respect for, for sort of entrepreneurs. And I guess in this case, the, the chief executive or maybe the manager would be filling that role. He's, he's enjoyed uh, a lot of patience from his investors uh, with, with Spotify's high ambitions and high spending, right? Uh, while uh, turning over losses for a long time. Um, and he's had the full confidence of a lot of his owners to do that. And he's been able to execute to, to such a degree that you know they're, they're fully satisfied at this point, of course. Spotify has been great for users, as you were saying. It's been great for the shareholders. It's You can debate whether it's been good or not. It's been good for the industry in terms of sort of the major record labels, but has it been good for individual composers and artists? You know, that remains to be seen. But I think, I mean, Daniel, um, you know, lavish spending uh, is something he's not sort of, he, he's he's kind of known for it, to be honest. Like, he, he wants to compete with the Googles and the Amazons, etc., the Apples, and so he he sort of he'll, he'll spend you know a few years ago before the IPO um, I reported a story where he he just spent uh, money on a Swedish startup that was turning over you know not not even in the millions of pounds per year um, and he spent around uh, fifty thousand pounds on the company just just like to acquire it just because he he liked their vision and what they were doing and he wanted to work with the people who were running that company so that's the kind of person he is right he he's when it, when the Gimlet Media founders, which was a podcasting company, when they had a meeting with him in Stockholm, um, one of his questions was, you know, what would you do if I gave you a billion dollars? And of course, they did not have a, a great answer in the moment. But I believe they they later recalled him saying, you know, I you know I don't I don't expect you to have an answer for that right now, but I want you to start thinking at that scale because that's the scale that we play at. Was basically what he said. So, so that's the kind of person he is in business, right? So, in that sense, maybe you know, 
he he'd uh, he'd be super generous as an owner who knows but then there's two issues i mean one is the fact that he'd need another few investors i think to get this done right because it's going to cost a lot of money we don't know exactly how much uh we do know that it's very unlikely that daniel would finance it all himself and so he'd be dependent on co-investors and do they share his vision what what are their motives you know if that's venture capital or private equity capital then of course they're going to want to see returns within a certain time frame and that that could pressure daniel and the ownership in general to make decisions in in one way or another right and another issue is that you know daniel while he's sort of remained in sweden while he's he's he lives mostly here he spends a lot on sort of property development here to get a, make a nice home for for him and his family while he's you know he's he's sort of proud he's kept his, his spotify shares are in malta actually in cyprus um so because that's a sort of structure that he put in place very early on along with his co-founder but apart from that he's he's i i believe he's you know pretty pretty keen to actually um both reinvest his money in in European companies, but also to to pay his fair share of taxes in Sweden, right? But then there's also another aspect, which is that he's not necessarily known as someone. So he grew up in in Rogsved, not too far from from where I live, um, in in southern Stockholm, and and he's not around there. You know, he's not really known as a person who's sort of come back home as a as a hometown hero who's come back to invest in you know whatever it might be that's not the kind of uh sort of uh investments he's he's making necessarily he's he's reinvesting a lot of his wealth but it's not necessarily into sort of where he came from exactly right so so yeah. you know w- whether he would be that sort of com- important sort of community uh a, a owner that would benefit the sort of community i don't know but but it's it's um there's a number of things that that you need to take into consideration when you think about what kind of owner he might be and it's it's a fairly open question but i but i think one thing to circle back to is the fact that it's true he he is an arsenal fan i don't think he would be doing this if he wasn't that said he operates like a businessman and he would have he would probably have constraints on him to to do that in this case too i i mean i've got to say fascinating stuff i've learned so much from you sven um I, and and to be honest I, it's answered a lot of my doubts you know and when i say doubts it's not because it, I, I always said if i could pick the cronkies or ek i'd have chosen ek every single time but that doesn't mean that you don't you know when you don't know that much about someone or a potential owner you want to learn more and um some of the stuff you said i've i've, I've you know is music to my ears and I think they've approached this in the right way and, and I hope they continue to do so and being up front with the fans is a big part of it. Um, I'm going to ask you one last question to round it off. Um, he's, I think he's kind of touched on the 50 plus one model, or at least Henri did in terms of involving the fans and the board. Um, we know this is something we've seen across the European football as well. And he seems, you know, he's an Arsenal fan. As you said, he's an Arsenal fan. He cares about the club. I've got one last question for you though. It's a big one. Is he a winner? Do you think and i don't just mean in business but i mean you know if he were to become arsenal owner is he a winner yeah i think so i think you don't i don't think you get to that level of success without without having that kind of mindset he can sometimes sort of uh, uh play up his his modesty in, in interviews you know when apple launched apple music which was a major sort of recognition for spotify because it showed that they'd gotten apple to change their business model from from downloads and mp3s to streaming uh finally spotify had this this great sort of uh foe that they'd been sort of anticipating for a really long time um competing for for the streaming market and and daniel uh went out in an interview and said well um you know we don't we don't necessarily have to be number one you know number two or three is great um and i think that's uh it's interesting that he would say that i don't think it's what he truly felt spotify is still the sort of um world leader in music streaming and and he, he you know he wants to keep it that way and in some ways because of how the model works he has to keep it that way they'll only survive and and thrive uh at made at scale you know at a global scale and i think that's that's sort of the game he's in and i and i think that he's regardless of whether he's an arsenal fan or not if he undertakes something like this i think he's he's he will he'll be predisposed towards long term thinking and he will be predisposed towards you know really sort of getting arsenal back to to what it was i think that's that's truly his intention but you'd have to see also what sort of 
under what conditions he places this bid if it does uh, eventually surface, you know? Who are the co-investors? What are their sort of, what's their time horizon? What, how might that impact his, uh, the way that he, um, the way that he runs the club essentially? So we yeah. have to see. Brilliant. Well, look, Sven, thank you so, so much for joining us. Uh, just very quickly, where can people find the book? Yeah, um, it's out on Diversion Books in the US. It's not out in the UK yet, but I believe you can find it on on a, on a book website near you. Um, and, and that's it. And it's it's being um, adapted into a Netflix uh, series, too. So that should be forthcoming. I don't know exactly wow. when, but it's it's uh, in the works. Wow, that'd be, that'd be amazing. I look forward to that. Look, thank you so, so much for joining us, Ben. Uh, it's been great. Guys, everyone who watched, thanks for tuning in. Do comment in the comment section any questions you've got. We'll have a little look through them. Like, subscribe, all that. Um, it's exciting. It's moving along. That's the important thing. It's not... They're not letting up. The fans aren't letting up, but also it seems Ek, Henri, everyone involved is sort of keen to keep this in the media, which, you know, is music to my ears. Um, it's been great chatting to you, Sven. Let's see what happens. Thanks very much, guys. More content coming out this week. And don't forget that big Europa League game against Villarreal. Are we going to go through, Sven? Do you think we'll do, you think we'll do it? I hope so. I really I hope, so. I hope so too. I hope so too. The confidence isn't quite there for me, but no. I think we might just do it. Let's see. All the content coming out this week. Thanks, guys. Catch you in the next one.